First, let's break down today's action, the week's action with our market panel as the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 post their longest daily losing streaks since 2022. Scott Cronert of City and Nicole Webb of Wealth Enhancement Group. Welcome, guys. Happy Friday, Nicole. So um, I'll talk about today, but I also want to look ahead, right, to, to big tech earnings next week. After Netflix tanked on some pretty good results, mm -hmm. Super Micro dropping like 23% yeah. just because they didn't pre-announce. That's, that's a lot, but it was up and out a lot, too. Is the bar just really, really high for stocks like Meta, even maybe Visa service now? Yeah, I mean, it's been actually a little bit shocking, some of the stories that have been pulled out of Netflix just intraday today. I mean, the, the upset around things like taking away subscribership data in 2025 you know, it really sets the tone, though, for what we expect out of some of the, the tech earnings to come. And I think it's this continued, you know, look through into the end of the year, which is, do we have a deacceleration of earnings growth from technology? And is this then the beginning of that rotation, which really creates that stickiness for the broadening and the acceleration or the, ex, you know, expectation of the acceleration of growth from other parts of the market. And so that storyline is picking up momentum here and I mean, that's kind of where we went into the year from a positioning standpoint. So we like it. We like seeing it play out this way. Hmm. So, Scott, from from an overall macro environment perspective, we've lost sort of that hope, a lot of it for rate cuts anytime soon. Now there's so much focus on earnings themselves. What does the market action today and throughout the week tell us about uh, what to expect there? So, John, I, I think it's supporting sort of a view that we've been of for the past several weeks now that we get it. The underlying S&P fundamental setup is very attractive, and our conviction in the 245 estimate for this year is probably stronger now than it was going into the year. And this is courtesy of underlying stronger economic data. But coming spe specifically back to the mega cap growth cohort, the issue for us for some time now has been one of implied growth expectations. Valuations for the semiconductor sector, as an example, had gotten to literally their highest level of the past 10 years. And this isn't, you know, necessarily a negative, except that it does put the burden not just on beats, but raises that match where those implied growth expectations are. That's the issue. The underlying growth dynamics here we, we think are in very good shape. It's just a function of the market probably getting a little bit ahead of its skis and, and pulling too much of, of a forward outlook into the current price action. Okay. Nicole, I see you nodding your head. I just want to note that the S&P 500 closed below 5K today, 49.67, down about 9 tenths of 1%. But, and Mike Santoli was talking about this into the close. It was a really kind of fascinating day in terms of the trading activity because the Dow Industrials actually closed higher. Dow trans Transports closed higher as well. It's really the sell-off we're seeing, and this is particularly true today, has been in... The tech stocks. John mentioned Super Micro down 23%. NVIDIA, a 10% move for such a big name. Buying opportunities here? You said before you like it. You yeah. like the setup. I do, and I think there's, there's going to be a lot of trading activity below the surface here. There's a couple of things that appear to be incredibly... It just the, the setup is there and the data is supportive of it. We have stickier inflation because we have higher growth expectations. Consensus growth right now is sitting near 2.5%. Where is a lot of that coming from? It's coming from onshoring. It's coming from productivity. It's coming from deglobalization. A lot of this setup, again, is going to make way for the value trade looking like the superior positioning into the back half of this year as we think about less cuts. We went from a market that had baked in six cuts to three cuts, barely no hiccup. Now it's all about, okay, it, maybe it is less. Maybe the Fed does let the economy run hot. How do we start to think about that? And I think we also have to leave room for the Fed doesn't want the economy to fall out of momentum. And so below the surface, yes, I think you're going to start to see people moving towards that, those value names. And at the same time, if your positioning was light in the semi space is one example, this is going to be a great time to shore up from a portfolio mandate perspective. And so I think you're going to see this as a buying opportunity for a lot of people, too. You're seeing this churning below the surface. You know, intraday over the last five days, we've seen kind of the market gap up at the beginning, gap down through the day through a lot of repositioning trade. And then from, you know, our perspective, where you sit working directly with individuals and families, anytime you have a tenure that's approaching 
or yeah, tenure that's approaching five percent, you start to have to make calls on: Do we trim and move to treasuries? Do you where where are you actually placing that money on the backside mm -hmm. of some of these trips?